I think we should start planning our own hollow final project together. I think if we start planning that now, then <laughs> we can we can really realize it. Yeah, right. So something that's to- totally cynical, total cash yeah, grab. Yeah. What I thought this was going to be based on how people had reviewed it. So yeah. Okay. What's the most cynical version of this? If we review, well, first of all, choice of film. It would have to be something that like is total Rotten Tomato style kicking downwards. Or Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> definitely beneath us at this stage we finally give the people what they want (laughs) and we spend the whole thing reviewing it painstakingly how none of it makes sense or is emotionally resonant because we don't find out how bruce wayne got back into gotham city and we never will that is the we never will and that's the important bit (laughs) of the film actually and meanwhile Um, the episode features hooty jimmy sweet shops whatever his name was oh yeah and 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 they're like little vignettes where they 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 dream fade into a scene where we're playing them and it's really badly realized. But weirdly, throughout the entire thing, we do not do an impression of Christopher Nolan, which everybody was hoping for. And uh... it's because he's there. <laughs> podcast that still has a little sand left i'm paul O'Salt. i had to kiss somebody <laughs> we are here we are <laughs> and here we are nine months later this is what's happened <laughs> uh, we are sluicing right down that history hole again <laughs> and the history hole and uh we're out of the atomic age and back into the immediate post-war era what fun is to be had mm. here <laughs> whiff it in whiff it in yeah. Ooh, smells like the beginnings of the welfare state. Fuck yeah. Or the equivalent in America, which was, go on, do a <laughs> job. Oh, we're still brilliant. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, a terrible shame yeah, about really Europe. Really. Still, they all owe us money now. Um, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, how about the very last film to feature the legendary Marx Brothers? Yeah. It's 1949's Love Happy. Once again was repeated the same pattern. A story of danger, cruelty, black violence, mystery, murder. By the way, what do you suppose the story was called? <laughs> love happy. Love happy, I'm love happy. It's wonderful to know the meaning of happy. And if I do, it's all because of you. Love Harpo. Love, 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 ha- love him. Love Harpo. <laughs> she. Chico... No. Chico, these out. If, oh, that's uh... very good. Don't be Groucho, <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> that was one of his famous catchphrases from the Duck scene. <laughs> now look, if you don't know who the Marx Brothers are or have never seen a Marx Brothers film, then go watch Duck Soup or Animal Crackers or A Night at the Opera um, because yeah. their style of wordplay, slapstick and quickfire gags is iconic for a reason. So... Check that yes, out. foundation of all comedy. It turns out all comedy. Yeah, there was no comedy before this. It was just jesters <laughs> going. Ooh, King's got a fat bum. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin was flicking himself in the balls, thinking this will be something. This will be something. <laughs> Buster Keaton was there, also trying it. But um, yeah, it was only when twenty years after they both started, the Marx Brothers really knocked him out yeah, the park. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, just fucking kicked him right in the right in the face. And it was like yes, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. They were the, they were the guys who did the train film, right? <laughs> together they did they both yeah, did the train two of those. it was called <laughs> modern train <laughs> and modern family is a remake of it but fewer trains which is um typical of this bloody generation gus van sant would have had a thing or two to say about that definitely would have but uh thank god we don't have to hear it now because it's uh the pauls talking about bloody the movie that the love happy yeah love happy love the happy movie. love happy <laughs> love happy you get in your love. Happy. We couldn't get Cole Porter to do this song. <laughs> I love the way he trails off halfway through. I love happy. Let's go first. Can I get paid now, please? Yeah, this is the, <laughs> this is the one they made to pay off Chico's gambling debts. Yeah, great. Yeah, they struggled to get it funded, uh, which led to a unique at the time product placement deal, which caused some controversy, which is uh, adorable by modern standards. <laughs> they put products in their films. 
How dare they? How dare Very they? Very strict adherence to the Dogma 95 manifesto, um, <laughs> filmmakers from the 50s. This podcast just defies any sense of time. Nothing nothing causally leads to anything else anymore. It's all fucking <laughs> I madness. Refuse. <laughs> I refuse to let time hold sway over us, Paul. <laughs> well, speaking of which, um, pre- and post-fame Marilyn Monroe um, is also here. But it is generally regarded by critics as the weakest of the brothers. And maybe... <gasps> yeah. Just like I'm regarded as the weakest of my brothers. <laughs> Only in a physical sense. Only as much as, you know, you had the birthing right. Yeah. Where after being born, you had to then fight your way out of the pit. It, and um, you had to be rescued by your mum. How embarrassing. It, the fighting thing worked <laughs> until I was about 12. And then um, my other brothers started hitting puberty. And um, they were just men then. <laughs> they immediately became blokes with pipes, hats and slippers. Great Danes <laughs> that came out of nowhere. And they would sit by the fireplace musing about the Chinese economy. <laughs> the, it's like, whoop. Definitely what a bloke is. <laughs> we were all playing with our butts yesterday. <laughs> Guys. Well, as we still do, but in a different way. <laughs> the way you, won't, you shan't understand until you become a man. <laughs> and that's yet to come. <laughs> well, speaking of someone who's already well and truly a man, Steve I thought you were going to say, sorry, who's well and truly come. <laughs> <laughs> well and truly come all over the shop is Steve Painter. You watch him paint. Over at Festival Reviews, Go on. who says, Today, Love Happy is billed as a teaming of Marilyn Monroe and the Marx Brothers in order to get people to watch the movie. But don't be fooled, though. Neither one is at the top of their powers. And it is true. Marquis for this sell it as Marx Brothers' first build, Marilyn Monroe's second build. And mm. neither is quite accurate. <laughs> no. Not really. Starring Harpo Marx would be co-starring a few people before the other <laughs> Marx Brothers. <laughs> yeah. And some spliced in scenes on the cutting room floor from other movies starring the Marx Brothers. Probably. <laughs> the public also took to it like a dog in a coat. Aww. Joe Carlosi, an IMDb, said, The last Marx Brothers film is not the right place to begin if you've never seen one of their movies before. Oh, Imagine whoops. doing that! <laughs> Where were you, Joe Carlosi? Where have you been all my, in my life? life? Baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. Well and truly calm. So... <laughs> Um, I don't have any info about how it did financially, or critically, or popularly, really. I just vaguely know that it exists and is not considered to be very good, so we did it. Cool. Take that. Do you know what, guys? I'm actually having trouble finding films from the history hole now. <laughs> there aren't that many Rotten Tomatoes bottom films of the 40s lists out there. You're basically just trying to stave off Reefer Madness and public service <laughs> announcements from the 20s. <laughs> Look, here's what I've done, right? Babe Ruth story is the next one. Okay. And then after that is Reefer Madness, because I just can't fucking do it anymore. I think we need to climb out of this hole. We've got to go back to the 70s or something yeah. to when people seem to pay attention. Or maybe all of those people who say, you know, they don't make movies like that anymore. Maybe they were right. Maybe genuinely people didn't make bad movies in the 30s and 40s. It wasn't <laughs> time. There was a war on. Do, do you know how hard it is to make something in the 30s and not lose it? <laughs> You just, it's probably like oh, down the back the of thing. like Orson Welles' sofa. Just some film about butts. <laughs> Do you know what? That's probably right. All the bad ones weren't really kept and were just lost to the ether. Yeah. Jesus. I wonder if Jack and Jill will endure the centuries. It will. It definitely will. It's the cockroach yeah. of movies. It definitely will. Yeah. We need to. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, be buried with it. After this, yeah, um, whether you insist or not, after this, we just need to go back <laughs> to those 1920s sort of maybe your best friend is a communist. <laughs> yeah, if just I can fucking find Five minutes them. long. <laughs> Maybe it's just that. Maybe your best friend is a communist. Best kill him just in case. <laughs> Thanks, voice in my head. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, no three men, but I do have a two man. Ooh. Yeah, Clarence Nash is credited as doing vocal effects for this film. And Mr. Nash's final film before he died was uh -huh. The Black Cauldron. Oh. Voicing that pig. No way. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are the odds of that? That's. The only two men, and it's a consecutive two men. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing now. We, yeah. we have plans for next week, but it's a relevant pool. We need to find <laughs> a terrible film that Mr. Nash was in, so we could just really lay into him <laughs> posthumously. <laughs> wait, wait, um, is Paul going to make it or not? Let me try calling him. <laughs> Hello? He voiced the pig! <laughs> yeah, I know, he voiced the pig. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> he is most famous for being the original voice of Donald Duck. Really? He invented the least impersonatable duck ever. 
that's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. I learned it from my dad. <laughs> my dad didn't teach me. <laughs> he taught me how to shave and manage things financially. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you turned that quite well. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm all right. <laughs> Scuffle out of the place. <laughs> Excuse me. He's fine. Sorry, cat. <laughs> Um, this is also the final film of producer Mary Pickford. Now, Pickford was fucking awesome. She started as a film actor and was one of the most yeah. popular of the 1910s and 20s, earning her, earning the name Queen of the Movies. Uh, then she worked Queen of the producer. Movies. The Queen of movie the thing. Movies. Hey, get a load of this chick. She's the Queen she's, of the she's, Movies. She's coming everywhere. <laughs> Definitely come. Uh, <laughs> then she worked, Then she came as a producer and she co-founded Pickford Fairbank, Fairbank Studios. United Artists, you may have heard of, and oh. another one you might have heard of, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Not that one. No. In fact, they then gave her, um, a couple of years later, like, or well, maybe it was even the first Best Actress Award. So it's kind of like she had to invent an Academy to <laughs> award how amazing she was. The first year was just award for Best Female Actress in <laughs> last film she was in. <laughs> Gee, Miss Pickford, you sure are swell. Do you have a golden painted man to give me? No? I just feel like it's not worth anything until somebody hands me a golden painted man. <laughs> and I think it should be modelled after my husband. And a guy comes in with no face. He looks exactly like the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Dame. <laughs> I'll get right on it. <laughs> I like your muxy. And your cum. <laughs> Did you say here's your cum? <laughs> there you go, cum. You need to give it to them. What people didn't realize about the, like the female sexual revolution was that you needed to give them the orgasm before they could have it. That's you the give key, them yours. boys at home. Get Learn it now. Get your jiffy bags out. So, Paul, <laughs> Paul you heal that's been repaired. Yeah. Uh, what's one thing about this film that made you want a longer banana? Oh, well, it reminded me of Hail Caesar, which is good. So you can see it, it, it had its oh, influences good. in the Coen brothers. Um, it, it, drew, it drew heavily off of... Um, off of that Channing Tatum dance. And that's good. That That's lived on. Into yeah. uh, Love Happy. Yay! Clearly the Coen brothers were a big influence on the Marx brothers. First of all, they stole the idea of being brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Because time is a flat circle. They didn't copyright it back. And... <laughs> you can copyright that now. I did it. Absolutely. I can't wait for the 1920s to start in four years. So... Well, what happens? What happens in this fucking movie? Oh, well, it's, it starts with old Groucho, doesn't it? Old Groucho Marx. Oh, brilliant. And, and, and the, the, On one of his three filming days. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what? He, <clears throat> he, he worked two-hour days, and you, know, you can really tell. Um. <laughs> Secrecy is my motto. I never tell. You will notice even my business card has nothing on it. I am the same Sam Grunion who solved the international uranium mining swindle. Scotland Yard was baffled. The FBI was baffled. They sent for me, and the case was solved immediately. I confessed. He, uh, and, and he, uh, here's a secret, Paul, here's the twist, which I imagine is the source of his comedy. He's not, he's not grouchy at all. No, he's, not he's actually bit grouch. not. God, I came to this thinking that it would be very much like the uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. That Groucho would be grouchy, that Harper would be Harp, and <laughs> that um, Chico would be a really hot chick. <laughs> I started masturbating, and I didn't stop for hours. <laughs> and let me tell you, it was an awkward day to be watching this in a church. <laughs> the the important thing here, which you really could have told the vicar, <laughs> Chico is the male version of that. Ah, oh, fuck yeah! You're you're looking for Chica marks. There's <laughs> Chica marks. Then that's the, the the really hot Latin American one. <laughs> that's I think yeah. there might actually be a Marx Brothers po- pa- um, porn thing out there. Marks with three X's. Chica, Chica <laughs> marks. Harpy. Felcho marks. <laughs> And, and Ballo Marks, <laughs> the, main, the guy Marks. of the thing. <laughs> yeah. Big Ball Marks. Hello, everyone. So, <laughs> the brother that none of us wanted to talk about. <laughs> yes, Groucho Marx is, is here, and he's a, he's yeah. a private dick, and he, yeah. he, he tells many, many funny jokes, which really makes yeah. me question people's critiquing credentials. Well, yeah, he tells an extraordinarily num- a number of very quick jokes. Mm. Um such is his want. Then we get the song of the film, like the Will Smith. <laughs> love happy, I- love happy, love happy. <laughs> a wicked, wicked love happy. <laughs> um, yeah, and after that, Marks, Groucho Marks. 
shooting them jokes. We've got a theatre, right? Yeah. We've got a theatre troupe, and they're putting on a show called Love Happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's full of si- songing and dancing and pianoing. Songing and dancing. And s- songing and donging. And they depend, they're quite poor, very desperate, yeah. and they depend upon the efforts of one Harpo Marx to go and steal food. Yeah, they do. And he yeah. does. He does this at a very posh delicatessen, which is a sort of black market yeah. jewellery um, <laughs> thing that in the back. All the time, back in the yeah. 40s, is your average delicatessen was probably going to be a criminal front for an Eastern European lady, who we also meet. Yeah, we also meet, and she's got fantastic teeth, Paul, and the smallest lips <laughs> in the world. It's all part of the act, and it's extraordinary. Um, it's amazing. Harpo manages to do some elite-level stealthing um, yeah. in, this ba- in the basement of this place, and then he accidentally acquires the diamonds. He teabags the the guy holding them. <laughs> he he pones all of his enemies and he gets out of there with a perfect five star rating. And <laughs> yeah, he goes back he goes back to the theatre with all the food he's managed to grab and the diamonds. Unwittingly. But the fact is the diamonds are hidden in sardines and no one yes. likes sardines. No one. Literally no one ever could. Not even would. actors. It's, it's a constant from the forties. Yeah. <laughs> Only I like sardines, apparently. So and <laughs> Exactly. I, I, I would be the richest man in the world for three minutes before I panicked <laughs> and took them to the police. <laughs> so, um, we also have... We've had Harpo doing his Charlie Chaplin physical yes. comedy. We've had Groucho doing his iconic one-liners and wordplay. Yeah. Now it's time for Chico to do his iconic being Italian. <laughs> you like a sardines? Yes. Why, have you got any? No, but I got a something better. I got a something that's worth a million dollars to you. Really? What is it? Love. It come to me like a flash. The first minute I see you, it's what you call him love at the first to look. And he does that. He does that very um, well. He hoodwinks um, one of the funders into yeah. remaining a funder. Yep. And he, he gets a job also in the theatre company just to basically keep doing yeah. that, I think. Yeah. We spend and, and some... To, and to fall in love. <laughs> we later. spend some time in the theatre company, see a couple of music, musical numbers, including a jolly song about beating your kids that I love. Because mommy's got something to ask you before you crawl into your nice warm beds. Mama wants to know who stole that gem, who's been in her nice clean kitchen, who stole that gem? Was it little Tom or Sue or Mabel, who snuck it off the table, even ate the label? Yes, I'm a big, big fan of that one. That's a, <laughs> that's a good thing. Very good um, thing. But then they capture Harpo again through shenanigans. Yeah, because Harpo not only mm. steals food, but he steals more food. And that is oh, no. his downfall. He also steals hearts. He, 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 steals, he stole my heart and he gave <laughs> it to you. He put it in you. <laughs> he, put it you right, he put it right up me. And, uh, so now you have two hearts. Yeah, having a lovely throb of, th- throb of a time. So <laughs> A throb throb. He has at this stage, though, lost the sardines. That is now in the ownership of the lady. The actor twats. Yes, the actor twats. What's her name? Um, I wrote that. Oh, Maggie. Vera... Maggie's got him. Maggie. At the moment. She's got him. Yes. And um, yes, yeah, she gets... Well, Harpo then gets kidnapped and hypnotized by villain woman who uses 40s sound effects to hypnotize him. Yes, and it's wonderful. <laughs> Mine. There's, there's some excellent f- physical comedy. It's the mm. worst film of the Marx Brothers' career. Um... <laughs> And rather than, because he's, I don't know if he speaks in any of his other movies. I nope. don't know if he's able. He I don't know if he's human. He didn't speak in real life. He did the prestige. Yeah, he okay. lived the fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, um, Teller. <laughs> Teller literally um, can't speak is the thing. Could, could Harpo speak? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's um like three recordings of him speaking in all the world. He just chose not to. Yeah. He's like Gilbert Gottfried. There's one recording of his normal <laughs> voice. Um, yeah, he. they're not going to get a word out of him. No, um, they're going to get a few honks, but no words. They get a few honks, um, but uh, Chico isn't around to translate. No. So, I was just going to say, they do spend an admirable, an admirable amount of time uh, yes. with a pocket emptying gag that goes on for so yes. long, it becomes funny again. Yes, the yeah. pioneers of anti-comedy. Um, <laughs> definitely. It's ahead of its time, ahead of its time. It's Stuart Lee. Different time. It's exactly Stuart Lee. So... <laughs> So yeah, and uh, they they 
let him go. Yeah. He calls Chico yeah. to communicate where he is and what's happened through a series of whistles, and it's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> and they realise what they need to do is follow him to the theatre. The theatre! Um, where there are a few more musical numbers for us to watch. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> They've been going for Glove days. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, please. Do we have a union yet? Uh, I'm not sure. Keep dancing. Uh, uh. <laughs> Including a musical number. What's that involved? knock on the door? Is that a union man? No. <laughs> I'm a union now. Ain't. I'm a union man now, baby. Um, speaking of which, main <laughs> dude, he's kind of an asshole. He, um, well, he's he's dating Maggie, and um, yeah. which in spite of the fact Harper, in spite of the fact, in blatant disregard of the fact that Harper quite likes her. Equal contender. <laughs> he, yeah, he throws he throws a can of sardines right in the trash because he's a bad dude. Yeah, he's better than sardines, Paul. He's pe- he's better than this sort of thing. I'm better than this life, but. Um, nasty woman shows up in order to offer to fund them. Yeah. And, uh, he, they go off alone together for a while. For some and guy smooching. comes back covered in lipstick. Yeah. He's been doing some smooching. Sorry. And some kitchen. Sorry, darling, I was doing some smooching. Hey, what do you say we go and grab a couple of milkshakes and get out? <laughs> go get married somewhere. Hell, baby. I was so excited I had to kiss somebody. And I'll do it again. <laughs> Happy birthday, bitch. <laughs> what was her birthday? <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna die, he says as he runs off. <laughs> So that's our hero, I think. But Harpo, yeah. he has a scene, he gives, um, that's, yeah, the diamonds end up in the trash. The trash goes out. Yes. The cat goes out. The cat goes into the trash. Yeah. The cat eats the sardines. Harpo finds yeah. the diamonds. The, um, evil woman's, uh, hench person or sort of whipped guy, um, finds mm. the empty tuna can and assumes that the diamonds are now inside of the cat. I get extremely yes. nervous for the cat. But luckily, it's not mentioned again, so far as I was aware. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to assume that that cat is also cat food now. <laughs> I just assume he rang that fucking cat out. But um, but Maggie, who is... <laughs> but Maggie, <laughs> who is is very upset because yeah. her best her best guy went off with um, <laughs> just a scheming lady. Who, a um, scheming lady? Who just, She's going to get hurt. Who just wants the Roman of diamonds. To be fair, it sounds like she deserves them. She had a hell of a time. Had to marry seven <laughs> different tr- looks. <laughs> yeah. She's schemed so many people out of their fortunes. Oh, yeah, just Jesus, she's like, had it. She, des- she deserves it. I think but so. But you know who doesn't deserve it? Ridiculous Maggie, who t- is taken to the park <laughs> by Harpo. Taken yeah. to the parko by Harpo to cheer her up. <laughs> um, and, oh boy, I-, I know that if I were rejected by my love, yeah. if-, if I were cheated on by my love, what I'd want is a mute clown <laughs> who insisted on telling jokes constantly. <laughs> Look. To try and cheer me up. A star. A real star. And Harpo, you'll be with me. Because you've always loved me. It was definitely the best understanding of mental health back in the day. Um, <laughs> there's a very unsettling scene in his shed with a deranged penguin in a suit that freaked me the fuck out. And then Harpo comes back to play the Harpo in the parko. He does. Yeah, and, he's um, well. Yeah, what a remarkable... <laughs> Remarco Harpo. Surprise-o. No. Parko skills, so yeah, it's hard. This is why we're not the Marx Brothers. It's true. It's the only reason. Marxo Brothers. No, <laughs> no, no. Fuck us, I guess. <laughs> so, well, talk. Go back to talking about coming. I think <laughs> it's all we've got. Speaking of which, <laughs> so we're back in the theater and everybody's coming all over each other. It's brilliant. I love it. And uh, so did the forces. <laughs> we all love it. <laughs> we all love it. Back at the theater, the scheme is now entering into its final phase. Yes, Maggie has the diamonds. I think. Uh, Maggie has the diamonds. She's yeah. macked on by, by is it her Bill? fella comes back. Her best guy. Her fella has now kissed yeah. every guy, gal, and dame in this city, <laughs> and has come back to her and says, "Happy birthday, doll. What are these loser gems? I'll throw these over here." And then <laughs> phonies. <laughs> she drops the diamonds in the in, in, into the piano. Oh, that's right. They drop it into the piano. Um, the yes. producers decide they need Groucho in the climax. It's not enough for him to just be. <laughs> Off in his own area. He's got to get involved somehow. Yeah. Uh, he nearly gets killed by some guy, and then he gets to be one of the very first people to perv on Marilyn Monroe on screen. Mr. Grenion, I want you to help me. I have a little sand left. What seems to be the trouble? Some men are following me. Really? I can't understand why. History. Oh, <laughs> history, mate. History. What a fucking legend, mate. Just <laughs> lad, oh, Groucho mate. Marx. I've oh. always said, I've always said, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. <laughs> Groucho Marx. <laughs> I've always Best said. comedic actor of his time. 
Like my old dad used to say, Arsenal, 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 <laughs> Arsenal, Charlton, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. And you know what? <laughs> I forget where I am. So, <laughs> often. <laughs> so the jewels are in the piano. The piano is being played by Chico, who's playing a very dramatic song that bounces the jewels up, which causes evil lady yes. to notice. Um, missing yes. scene. <laughs> um, half of the jewels. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a long period of charades. I can't remember how that plays into it. There's, there's a long period of charades, um, which is Harper communicating once again to Chico yeah. that um, Maggie's in danger because of Mad- Madame Igalici. Yeah, um, it's it's wonderful. A dog? What about a dog? A big dog? A police dog? Big big dog? Saint Bernard dog? Bigger bigger dog? Great Dane? A Great Dane? What about a Great Dane? Great Dane got a dimple? Great Dane got a whiskers. That's in my jaw. Great Dane, 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 jaw. Oh! There's lots of scuffling and yeah. Benny Hill. They stole from Benny Hill the whole running around thing. And then <laughs> they stole from Benny um, Hill and Alan Carr. And then and the Cohen brothers. And the Cohen brothers definitely. And yeah, also from David Cameron. And Harpo gets chased into some product placement from on the roof. society. <laughs> yes. From the big, they stole the big society, the concept, and all of their <laughs> their jokes. They hugged a hoodie. <laughs> they hugged all of the hoodies, and then they made it onto the roof to all the product placement. Oh. Um, it looks like Harper's in trouble, but luckily he has the mask powers, <laughs> so he's able to get away and almost kill both of his pursuers. It's Got actually quite terrifying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, it all ends up right in the end. Um, yeah. Harpo uses an axe to break the world. Um. <laughs> And the movie very quickly wraps up with uh, <laughs> Ma- Madame Eagle actually married to Groucho. Yep. Chico having to perform in a humiliating, uh, a, a contract mandated humiliating reference to his gambling issues. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to have that. Yeah. And Harpo he goes off to have more adventures, I guess. I don't know what, I, what I happens to the so. show, Maggie and that dude. Eh, forget about it. <laughs> you fucking want. You got your money's worth. Get out of here. What are you, a commie? <laughs> What, you didn't like cigars stubbed out on your face? <laughs> I'm sure they got great resolutions to plots in Russia. They actually do. They have a guy called Chekhov who kind of invented the idea. I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> Get out of here. Army <laughs> bastard. McCarthy so- comes in and goes, that's it. I'm shutting this system down. <laughs> <laughs> you will no longer be known as the Marx Brothers. <laughs> I thought there was something vaguely communist about your name. <laughs> what exactly? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Groucho. Communists are always so sad. <laughs> We all know about Leo Groucho Toy Story. So, <laughs> Groucho Toy Story. Wasn't even a communist. On the f- uh, anyway. Toy like, Story from the, the 19th century. <laughs> Toy Story from the novelist. From the novelist he <laughs> from was. From the books. I guess, I think I was going for Trotsky. Anyway. Oh, yeah. As we all try and remember who communists are and who novelists are. There are only, two con- there are only three contexts in which you learn Russian names, usually. One is communism. Two is literature of the 19th century. Mm. And then two is filmmaking of the early 20th century. So, Comrade Eisenstein, he, um, he, he cut the whole film to pieces and that was the end. Oh, great. Okay. And I, you know, I was satisfied. Yeah. It was, because it was yeah. my first uh, Marx Brothers movie. And it once, was. once I realized that I was going to watch a Marx Brothers movie, I was very excited. Yay! Um, <laughs> but we also thought about doing a thing where I don't watch any other Marx Brothers movies and just go into the bad one first mm. and see if that colors yeah. my judgment of them. Because I thought, oh, it's, if it's bad... It's going to have some yeah. sort of dodgy bit of racism in there or something where you just go, oh, God, <laughs> yeah. 50s, what are you doing? Yeah. Or 40s, same era. Yeah. But it was pretty good. It was, yeah, it was it really good. It was pretty good. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. It's pro- it probably actually is the weakest Marx Brothers film. I've seen, a, I've seen quite a lot of them now. And I can see why. Yeah, it, it's, it's because it's a little messy. In a way that the others aren't. Um, the, the the talent is still there. They are so fucking talented. They're all vaudeville kind of it. acts. Yeah. And they have that wonderful thing where they can just play instruments and dance and fucking it's do just, physical comedy and slapstick. It's and... hard not to be overjoyed when, yeah. when you watch a film like that. Yeah, exactly. There's just so much, there's just so much good shtick in there. And it, it I... I yeah. You could almost say it looks like a lot of effort has gone into it. It's hard to say because maybe this is just stuff they've done together. Like the whole yeah. charades bit, that's kind of that's kind of just been their bit for, you know, a long time and you know, this might just be effortless to them and yet yeah. it still looks so extraordinary to us. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, watching them go about all of that and it it truly yeah. is remarkable. You you can see 
you know how j- jokes aside, um, you know you, you have all these comics mm. before them, but you can you can see yeah. their seeds bearing fruit in Mel Brooks and Monty Python, and you know, sure, it's all there. Um, and yeah. it it reminded me of how happy it made me to go back and watch Naked Gun, which obviously the Marx Brothers ripped off heavily. Mm. Um, <laughs> where just just the, the sheer like s- saturation of jokes and comedy, and 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 yeah. the willful abandon with which. Uh, it's mm. done. You can't not just be filled with glee. Uh, it's just mm. the, the love and the fun yeah. the filmmakers are having. <laughs> and it, exactly. yeah, it's the same here. And it's yeah. the same watching Vera Ellen, the, uh, who I think played Maggie, who's, who's, yeah. who's, who's just dancing and, and spinning and yeah. spinning and spinning until I, God, I just can't <laughs> see anymore. Yeah. E- every, <laughs> everything about it is designed to make me happy. Except for, yeah, yeah you know, there are a couple of plot con- contrivances and like, just yeah. things a little worn and it well, dragged for like five minutes here and five minutes there but there's like very just minor yeah. minor quibbles yeah I, I think you can tell that if this was a um a harpo story written for him sort of exclusively and then awkwardly kind of repurposed yeah to include his brothers because really their scenes kind of lift right out yeah and you know the climax is kind of stitched together they don't actually impact on the story at all no. In a way that's always kind of distracting to notice when you suddenly realise, huh, you could really take the stuff out of here. Yeah. In addition to that, yes, yeah, some of it does feel a little bit like playing for time. And we've seen a lot of these gags sort of done better elsewhere in their careers. Yeah. But this, it is still just the case of, it's like, it would be like meeting like an elderly Rachmaninoff, you know, who's just got so much potential within them. Sure, it's not his prime, but... yeah. He just has this sort of wonderment within his fingers that he can just sort of turn off and on. And I feel like these guys, even the worst Marx Brothers film is still substantially better than a lot of the stuff we've covered. Oh, yeah. Is the thing. Oh, easily. <laughs> this, I mean, this would be in my top ten, I think. It... Sure. It, it's just really fucking charming. And I think that's all there is to it. And I will Pretty also much. say one strength that it has over other um, Marx Brothers films is that the women get to be really funny in this. And I'm sure I'm forgetting someone uh, from earlier in their filmography, but for the most part, when I think of the women in Marx Brothers films, they're usually the sort of straight people, um, yeah, okay. so to speak, so that the Marx Brothers can play off of them. You know, you'll have the okay. the stuffy old um, dowerist, you know, who is yeah. there in order to, you know, have comments made about her, or the um, young woman who everyone can then make sort of vaguely pervy remarks about. Yeah. In this, the women the women got to be fun. I really enjoyed Lady Igalici, yeah. who was Alina Macy. How many commissars did I marry, Alphonse? Five, Madam Igalici. There were three more, were they not? Yes, the Grand Duke and the two ambassadors. Eight weddings in three months. Before I could track down the Royal Romanov necklace. Just, she had some really great lines I'll mention in Quickfire. A and, singular performance. Yeah, just fucking... Yeah, singular performance and just fucking Vera Ellen as Maggie was incredibly talented and also very endearing. Yeah, painting in her beautiful. performance as well. Yeah. Um, you know what? Marilyn Monroe fulfills the function of most women in Mask Brothers yeah. films in as much as she does just come in, say a couple of lines and, you know, Groucho, make some suggestive comments. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I literally blinked and missed her cameo. Um, <laughs> I, I, I remember the Groucho yeah. Marx comments. I remember the jokes, but I don't yeah. remember. Like, I didn't <laughs> look at her at all because I actually just enjoyed yeah. Groucho Marx so much. And uh, as much as... He's very charismatic. Oh, God, it just oozes it. It's so effortless. Mm. Yeah. The, the, if this was written for Harpo alone i am still glad that they brought in the others just because (laughs) groucho yeah just as a a harpo story i think i i'd have had limited enjoyment some of harpo's best scenes are the ones where he's playing off of chico and and, yes and and also that is true and having groucho in there as well as as the introduction Mm. the the first five minutes is groucho and we'll get into this in in the in the in the one better thing in the in the one quick fire thing but the, the the quick fire gags that he's reading off yeah I I just woken up. I thought, okay, I'm gonna watch mm. this first thing Friday morning. It turned on, yeah. and I I was awake within within half a minute because I was like, I was just yeah. thinking, oh fuck, we're dealing with pros here. This is the big guns. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this one. Groucho has that delivery where even if it's not the best gag, yeah. it feels like it should be. Yeah, because of the way he said it. Yes, and I remember in one of my favorite clips, which is the um the introduction introductory scene of Rufus T. Firefly in uh, Duck Suit. Yes. He's talking to the old Taoist kind of woman, and he's saying... That, well, that covers a lot of ground. Say, you cover a lot of ground yourself. You better beat it. I hear they're going to tear you down and put up an office building where you're standing. You can leave in a taxi. If you can't get a taxi, you can leave in a huff. If that's too soon, you can leave in a minute and a half. 
You know you haven't stopped talking since I came here? Yeah. You know you haven't stopped talking since I got here? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just that last one really got yeah. me. That one really made me laugh. The fact that he's been doing nothing but riffing on her yeah. for like 30 seconds and then says, you know, you've done nothing but stop talking since I got here. Yeah. That had me... It just... It, it takes you by surprise because maybe you're thinking, oh, well, these are a bit old. These are a bit late. Oh, shit. That one was really great. Yeah. He does it so quick that one of them's going to make you laugh. And if not, just the process of him doing it is kind of the thing that will make you laugh. It's And, and it's his... It, like, he has true agency. It's his full awareness yeah. of the process. Yeah. Like, sewing everything together, knowing full well what he's doing. He's not just out there mm. vamping like Kevin James. <laughs> Looking for the nug. No, yeah. it's all very tightly written. Yeah. And that's that's Groucho, and that's great. You know, his, his gags are still really funny, even if um, sometimes the p- politics around them kind of date a yeah, little sure. bit. But there's a silliness there, which I think is a saving grace. And then you've got Harper, who is Charlie Chaplin, essentially, yeah. pretty much directly. He's got the same innocence, but slight mean streak. Yeah. Um, he's a little crazier yeah. <laughs> in some ways. There's a couple of moments where it's like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's a bit much. <laughs> this guy's kind of a psycho. Um, <laughs> a bit of Scarpo. That's Harper's whole thing, and it works great. A bit of Scarpo. But uh, Greta, Greta Scarpo. <laughs> it's all going to come good. Ha- yeah, Harpo's got that going for him, and that's ageless. It's physical comedy. It's, you know, he clearly ripped it off from Mr. Bean. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's a problem. Yeah. Somewhere out there, a film historian is just literally tearing themselves in <laughs> They all listen to this as well. Right down the seam. <laughs> they love this. They um, and then you have got Chico, who's harder to quantify, mm. but is still really good. I mean, he's an extraordinarily talented pianist. Yeah. For one thing. I mean, the scene of him just playing the piano is really, really good. Yeah. Now, look, Mr. Lyons, I know you want to make a good impression, but the please don't play better than me. same thing it, it was interesting the duet that was going on with him and mr lyons um yes he was like the, the control that he had in that scene over the other, yeah. the other guy just uh, stringing him along leon belasco who was in um holiday inn uh, okay uh, played coming for you leon. <laughs> um <laughs> think you're in a timeless holiday classic fuck you <laughs> i'm chico marx i do whatever i like yeah and it, it, it was great just watching him work him like a puppet really um <laughs> yeah a, like really great <laughs> screen presence but in such a way that you could just tell that leon was absolutely delighted with the whole process oh yeah you know it's just yeah uh, yeah and, and watching him work <laughs> with harpo especially it looked like he was the adhesive he he, he strung yeah. a lot of it together as well good. yeah he's got really good timing and, and it felt it felt just... so um what, what's the word spontaneous even yeah. though i'm sure it's just <laughs> tight and, <laughs> and heavily heavily scripted what yeah. what made you laugh it was um what's the word <laughs> Spontaneous. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm not Chico, right? <laughs> that I'm... was a really good gag, though. <laughs> Well, look, we've we've talked, we've given our verdicts on this film. It's a lot of laughs. Yeah, it's really fun. I think the only reasonable way, because ultimately this is a film that is like a bunch of good things strung together. Yeah, a little bit haphazardly, a little bit chaotically, and in a way that's not quite organic, but it's still just something that's going to entertain you when you watch it. Like you know, really any of the Marx Brothers yeah. film. And the only real sin of it is that it is a Marx Brothers film. And so I yeah. think people would expect something a bit more cohe- cohesive. A bit sexier. That's quick fire. Quick fire. The first gag that made me laugh was, um, you know, talking about this murder case somewhere. And he's like, mm-hmm. and I saw, then I came in and I solved the case straight away. I confessed. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, really made me laugh. That one took me... As, as being the first gag, it sort of put me yeah. on the back foot. And I was like, wait, hang on. That, that was a joke I liked? Oh, no. <laughs> Catch up. Keep up, Paul. Um, but yeah, you know, he's saying he keeps secrets. I'm so secret that even my business card has nothing on it. And he you know, yeah. picks it up and just waves it around and it's completely blank. It's just <laughs> fucking perfect. Yeah. Are we just going to go line by line through Groucho Marx? <laughs> Let's <hopefully>? hope not. <laughs> Let's find I've got, out. I've got a couple more from that. Get, do both now. <laughs> All right. He's introducing some of the people in the in the theatre. Oh, in yeah. the theatre company. And um, the mm. first one is Bill. And uh, this is Bill. Interesting dance. It's a dance he learned fighting off bill collectors. <laughs> and it's this, like, 
thrashing <laughs> thing where he's yeah. kicking down, like climbing on a chair and yeah, like swiping madly at the space in front of him. And it's so yeah. silly. Just so <laughs> gloriously stupid. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, um, then it cuts to Maggie. That's Maggie Phillips. She's in love with Mike. She's a dancer too. But it's hard to tell when she's sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. And I also... When he says, um, it's getting pretty cold around here, she's knitting herself an electric blanket. It was yeah. almost as if he was, like, watching the footage and just riffing over the elements in it. Yes. He saw yeah, Thief in the Cobbler and thought, oh, I can do better than this. <laughs> I can beat this. Back in the time hole. <laughs> Maybe the history hole, the history hole of um, project that we were a part of is just tearing holes in time. Yeah. It's like Bioshock Infinite, where people are, like, hearing glimpses of um, girls just got want to have fun, coming for a tear, yeah. and now it's changing all of history. And that's why I love it, and it's never going to stop. Reefer Madness, here we come. Um, I'll go for the tap dancing girl in the opening credits. And just really generally, some of the dancing in this is just incredible. Um, it, it's mm. very tacked in. A, a lot of the dancers aren't even characters in it. But yes. yeah, the theater allows them a chance to feature a lot of really impressive um, dancing. And the tap dancing girl did that thing where she does a dance that just feels way more modern than I would expect. Like mm. suddenly it beca- it loses this kind of formalist, you know, traditional yes. style, and suddenly becomes really abstract or weird. And I'm like, holy shit, they were up to that sort of thing back then, up to that level, <laughs> level eight. <laughs> oh, I didn't know the fifties, the forties were into that kind of thing. <clears throat> A little bit of abstract tap dancing, if you will. <laughs> um, actually, Vera Ellen's piece in the middle of the mm. movie that does end with her dancing with like tribesmen. But oh yeah, th- that's also really strange and amorphous. Um, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, limbs going all asunder, but definitely being in control. So you know, it's intentional. <laughs> torn asunder, like me. <laughs> yeah, she's torn asunder by bears, and um, <laughs> the bears were very interesting. It's really, really adventurous choreography. <laughs> um, Harper sli- has great sleight of hand with that sardine can. He lifts it from the guy's pocket and then swaps it with another one and slips it back into the guy's pocket just effortlessly. It's really. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great physical actor, and um, he really is. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, speaking of that, then when yeah. um, he's being interrogated by Madame Igalisi, he um, yeah. after a while, his hypnotism obviously gets mm. the better of him, and he t- performs this forty-five degree like lean yeah. Yeah. towards her when she's trying to sp- <laughs> interrogate him, and he's got his mouth right. open and he's staring bug-eyed at her, <laughs> and the camera pans back. And yeah. yeah, he you know he's leaning. It's a forty-five degree angle. There's no, mm. it's it's a impossible stance for him to take. Yeah. But the pat, the like the camera reveal is just wonderful. I'll take two moments um, coming off of that. One of them oh. is um, Matt Madame Igalici saying, um, "Well, she can't find the mark that indicates that this is the necklace case, the case mm. that has the uh, the gems in it." It must have rubbed off. It was put on with special adhesive paint. A generation of rubbing could not have removed it. Yeah, Which is I fantastic. had generation of rubbing down. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and then, shortly after the interrogation, he's been starved for a couple of days, and mm. um, they they bring him out and put an apple on his head mm. and try and shoot it off, and he misses the shot, and he grabs the apple and starts eating it really frantically, and somehow yeah. gets hold of the gun and points it to his own head yeah. whilst <laughs> frantically eating this apple, and he's soaking wet as well from an earlier torture. And the image was pure fucking madness. Yeah. Of Harper Marx soaking wet, bug-eyed, holding a gun to his head, eating an apple like a madman. Yeah. And it was like an ad man, madman would eat an apple, if you've seen it. Um, <laughs> it was a, an image that will stick with me. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I have that as well. It was um, not, not quite sure what I was seeing, like struggling <laughs> to comprehend for a while there. Um. Another thing with uh, from Harpo, he's uh, yeah. he's in the theatre and he's he's got his gaze fixed on Vera Ellen. Yeah, I think uh, Chico comes in asking for food mm. and he fishes the sardine tin out of his pocket. Um, I still glued on Vera Ellen and Chico yeah. goes, "Oh, I, I don't want the sardines." And then with his other hand, Harpo pulls out a full ice cream from his pocket, and it's <laughs> yeah. it, and it's it's no wrapper, just a fresh ice cream cone with yeah. a lovely <laughs> scoop of it. And he takes it and licks it and, and you know walks away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's just it's it's a mix of the surreal, but the, yeah. and, and then thinking how how does a how does an ice cream keep its form <laughs> after being in, in that horrible coat with lit, with everything else they stole? <laughs> a dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they pull a sled out of it in that in that routine, yeah. um, which is yeah, just a, a, the the best punchline to a pulling out oh, po- pockets gag. 
Um, I'll have another Chico line. I, although it's not a Chico line, it's something that gets said to Chico. Well, I'm the most unknown and unheard of actors who've never been on Broadway. What's your name? Faustino the Great. You never heard of me, huh? No. <laughs> what did I tell you? What are you unknown for? <laughs> I'm the most unknown, unheard of person who's never been on Broadway. <laughs> What's, uh, I don't know who said the line, Mama wasn't looking while that stuff was tucking. Oh, that's a song, isn't it? Yeah, that's it the sounds song like it. Is that the jam song? Mama wasn't looking. Yeah, it's the well, one where she's going to beat her kids if they don't. Yeah, tell the jam her song. Jam. The jam song has some of the best rhymes and like lyrics yeah. I've ever heard. It's really funny. Mama wants to know who made this mess. Mama's gonna kick some teeth in if you don't confess. Mama wasn't looking while that stuff was tooking. None of you had better scram or stall a jam. I really enjoyed that. Take that, rappers. <laughs> Take that, the rappers. <laughs> All the rappers. That'll, that'll teach him. Um, Harper goes to hide from a cop, I think, and knocks all of the chairs over, and they fall over yeah. in like rows, like yeah. knocking each the next one, and it's quite incredible. <laughs> yeah, I love the time taken to reveal. Yeah, and Harper's fully visible immediately, but everyone yeah. still stays f- still for long enough for all of the chairs to fall over, just so everyone can appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that too. Mm. Um, yeah, the whammy, Ma- Madame Galici which is mm. her hypnosis, I guess, um, which I just took yeah. to be powerful sexual wiles. Um, yeah. um, and you know, the eyebrows and then the sound effects, I just loved. Cause <laughs> it's clearly, it's, it's not them going, fuck, we've only got the, these few sound files. What have, it, It's yeah. them going, this is the dumbest, files. stupidest way we can do this. Yeah, what's a file? They were actually sound files. There was a, uh, a fucking filing cabinet that contained the sounds within them. They constructed a screw- wind chime. <laughs> <laughs> Constructed a wind chime out of files that uh, of different lengths that played <laughs> notes. Different. They had various effects. flutes that would play exact sound effects if you blew into them, and they kept those in the files. It's all in the files. <laughs> you just got to read it like all of a sudden. Release the files. Who, who was very influential on the Marx Brothers? Um, the handkerchief going through the ears gag. It's old, but it looks yes. great. Yeah. There's this weird immediacy where he he shoves a handkerchief in one ear and then pulls yeah. it out the other, and it just looked really good in a way that I would struggle to. Oh yeah, how they did. It's it really impressive. <laughs> they actually did it. That's the thing. Harpo's a pro. <laughs> it murdered Harpo right out. Harpo just killed him. Um, <laughs> Harpo's all of them. The, the the scene where the narrator Groucho is listing the inane bollocks mm. that Faustino Chico offers Leon's the the funder, a silver trash can, and and so on and so forth. Mm. And but yeah. well, as he's listing them, it's just loads of beautiful women coming out in procession. Oh yeah, and you have nothing to do with the list. <laughs> it was, I, was, I was trying to figure out what they were getting at with the, with that joke, but I still loved it. Um, a Chico line. He says, "Do you know Allegro Pizzicato?" And he's like, "No." How about Jimmy Pizzicato? <laughs> yeah, such a dumb line, but I really liked it. Do you know any of the Pizzicatos? It was very silly. I liked it a lot. And um, also another aspect of that scene, it it almost felt like Chico was playing the piano to distract from everyone from the fact that their show was being taken away. Mm. Um, because it started off as him trying to impress Leon to get him to keep it all there, but when he notices that everyone's getting upset about the set being all deconstructed, yeah. he says, "We best play one more." Yeah, and yeah, it was a sweet, sweet idea—the idea that he just wanted to play to keep everyone distracted. Yeah, and everything about that was was yeah. great. The two of them playing together, and yeah. the the, the, oh, the, the jokes of extending scene. the notes so Leon has to yeah. keep playing this the same note, and <laughs> and and, yeah. and Chico. When they like putting a finger on a treble key, like waggling his yeah. arm as though he's holding a note on in a violin, <laughs> yeah, like, mimicking uh, Leon's as he goes, um, <laughs> yeah, just just a really wonderful scene and you, just watching watching this and and seeing no cuts when people are dancing or or doing things. There are no yeah tricks of the camera because the guy can play the yeah. piano. It's just yeah, it's hard not to feel really really happy watching this. Uh... Um... The I can't remember the Grouch, the the line, but Groucho Marx says something and about like expecting to meet Count Booyah Bass. Oh yeah. Um. Again, just another really silly line that I'm not not expecting. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was really good. <laughs> yeah, Count Booyah Bass yeah. is very silly, very fun. Um. Speaking of Groucho, in I think probably the same scene, he just very casually one of his big things. And if you watch the cabin, uh, the overfull cabin thing, one of the joys of Groucho is the idea that just nothing phases him ever. Yeah. Um, no matter how chaotic yes. the situation around him is getting. And um, one of those lines that was really good was, Oh yes, Maganor, allow me to introduce you to the man who's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. That was great. <laughs> uh, 
when uh, Groucho Marx bumps into Madame Igalici again. Ah, Madame Igalici. Don't you remember me? Yes, I do. No, I mean before that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a really funny uh, line. Yeah. Um, I like Chico's line after he's found the diamonds. He's like, I saved Harpo. I saved the show. I'm the hero. Nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was great. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Um, the last thing was just, um, I think it was when, when Bill's sad because the thing's being shut down, um, Maggie goes, here, have some good hot coffee. Just such an old timey yeah. thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Is that coffee hot? <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> Put, get some bacon in that coffee. Yeah, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, it was very cute. Um, I've got two things left. One is the fact that they pay off the extendo grip. He, mm. they establish early on that Harper has this thing that allows him to like extend and grab things. And then he does that to oh, yeah. um, Groucho at the very end to get his diamonds back. That was fun. Mm. Finally, it's my favorite joke in the film. I've saved it to last. Because what it is, is an example of a visual gag. And visual gags are hard to come by. They're really sublime ones. The Zucker brothers used to be so fucking good at this. Um, yeah. And there's plenty of them in, you know, Airplane, Naked Gun, and uh, Top Secret. Um, and occasionally mm. you get a good one... Um, you know, and stuff like an Edgar Wright film, but a good surrealist yeah. visual gag is just my favorite thing in the world. Um, it really just gets to me. And the best one in this is Chico looks, at, pulls out a massive mirror from his pocket in order to comb his hair. Mm. And then he flips the mirror and the mirror is showing the back of his head. He's still uh, looking okay. directly at the mirror, but he flips the mirror and is now the back of his head. And that's such that's very good. wonderful nonsense. And such an inventive yeah. little joke. You know, the, the sort mm. where you're like, shit, that's such, that's so simple. But they came up with it, is the thing. Yeah. And that's that's just my favorite kind of gag. And um, it really delighted me. <laughs> good one to end on. Yay. Um, how about the uh, the one the one team that we've got who are good? The one team. The one team. Hi there, one team. <laughs> no. No? Well, fuck you, OG team. <laughs> Thanks. Suck my motherfucking dick. <laughs> We love you. We love you, really. But you need to watch Love Happy because it's great. Um, let's talk about the one better thing. The one better thing. Well, this obviously, because um, yeah. because it was amazing, and mm. yeah, especially if you haven't seen a Marx Brothers movie, then oh. watch this one first, and then go and watch <laughs> the rest. Uh, the clips you showed me of some of his other movies, some mm. of his other movies, <laughs> um, some of Marx Brothers yeah. um, earlier movies. John Marx jo- Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> He's a regal gentleman. <laughs> um, but it, it also brought to mind. So, what was the end of that uh, sentence? Some of the clips of their of their other movies. Oh, just just extreme silliness, yeah. especially the overcrowded cabin in the cruise. Yeah, um, <laughs> was oh, just 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 reveling in stupidity. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of this movie, um, as well as bringing to mind its predecessors like mm. Hail Caesar, uh, Naked Gun, Shaun of the Dead, Monty Python, and um, you know ev- ev- everyone else that the Marx Brothers stole from. Yeah, um, it also, from. also brought to mind uh, Make Them Laugh. Once yeah. or twice, you know that really wonderful piece uh, performance in Singing in the Rain. Oh yeah, yeah. just just the full like, all singing, all dancing. <laughs> Everyone here is more fucking talented than <laughs> your entire family and ancestors will ever be. Yeah, um, and you've only seen what they can do for twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> so if you're looking for a good in to classic movies of of that nature, going oh, away yeah. from the sort of slapstick stuff, then. Singing in the Rain's a good way to go. Oh, God, yeah. It's the best way to get into Hollywood musicals, into old-fashioned sort of comedy, and maybe just mm. old movies in general, because it just assures you yeah. that there was a tremendous amount of charm and wit back there. I yeah. mean, the one I always remember that is the um, vaudeville act that they have at the beginning, where they're both playing the violin, and it's just... Yeah. Fucking oh, hell. Oh, God. One of the just... most impressive things you'll ever see in musical theatre. It's just incredible. Musical films, right? Yeah. Or theatre. Fuck the theatre. Um, Fuck theatre. <laughs> My one Suck is my motherfucking. <laughs> <laughs> um, my film is another. Well, I mean, there's two options here that we've seen. You can either, if you're getting older, you're moving past your prime a bit. You either come back and just do it effortlessly, as if you hadn't aged at all, like the Mars Brothers do, yeah. or you can come back and make a film about a legendary person getting older and losing, you know, losing it a bit. So I'm going to talk mm. about Limelight, the 1952 film. And the last great Charlie Chaplin film, uh, in which he plays a clown who was once famous, once brilliant and incredibly funny, and um, has now become a bit of an alcoholic. And uh, he rescues a young girl from suicide, so it's quite a dark film. And whilst nursing her back to health, 
um, he ends up gaining back his own self-confidence and ends up going back on stage again in order to do one last show, um, ah. which he does with an old, um, uh, an elderly Buster Keaton. Um, and it's one of the, it's the only time the two of them appeared together. And yeah, better late than never. They're really great. Um, oh, that's cool. Chaplin is underrated as a dramatic actor. He is incredible. I mean, all of his comedy films assert that. If you watch The Kid or, you know, City Lights, you'll always see that he had great chops and instincts. But um, he's still really funny, even in a speaky. <laughs> um, yeah. You so, find most comics would be, would have the tragic. Yeah, it, it's it's very well related comedic. kind of things, you know. A lot of the times yeah. you develop comedy as a way of dealing with the crippling yeah, anxieties man. inside. And I know that was true yes. of Chaplin and his yeah. background. So, hey, Paul, why did the chicken cross the road? Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so to sad. get away from me, <laughs> come back, chicken. So yeah, come Limelight on. is great. It's really good. It's um a very cool. affecting film. It was actually uh somewhat panned upon the least simply because at that stage America decided that Chaplin was probably a communist, and so they were determined oh. to sort of hound him out of Hollywood. Uh, successfully, right. uh, they did that. But um. Oh. It was re-released in the 70s to great critical acclaim, and I believe that was where Chaplin won his only competitive Oscar. So hmm. it turned into a big success for him uh, great. later on. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, and that's Limelight. And that's, and the other thing, <laughs> the one better thing. Nice. Nice. The one better thing. All right, Paul, how can people find out more about our tragically declining health? <laughs> nice. You can do that on Facebook and Twitter at OGT Pod. You can send us an email at gmail at OGTPod at gmail dot nice. Uh, we are on Spotify as well as all good podcatchers. If you haven't left a review in a while, or ever, probably ever is a more suitable uh, word for that, then do it. It'd be really great. Just um it's the best one of the best ways that we get yeah. out there. The other is telling a friend. Um I tell all my friends. And you know what? Some of them listen. Yeah, absolutely. So, What's the um, worst they can do? Not be your friend anymore? Yeah. Oh. That that would be horrible. Well, you're better off happen. without them. <laughs> no, 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 you're better off without them. They were holding you back from the one good thing. <laughs> um, some, in some cases, literally, I've heard. <laughs> people are really trying um, to stop people from listening to this. <laughs> They're going to get physical. Um, we have a Patreon. Uh, mm. Not only have we released the Paul's pitch to Game of Thrones, which is fantastic. And you know what? <laughs> I'm re-watching Thrones at the moment. All of it fits. Our pitches fucking work. All of it. They work. <laughs> N- Nell hates it now because uh, I just keep nudging her in the elbows every seven seconds going see <laughs> that thing um, we've just released chapter four of 50 pools of shade fuck yeah and uh, and this last Friday we released the pools talk pop uh, the pools take a look at the pools UK top pop. ten and laying down some hot takes oh fuck like, yeah you're not gonna believe good. these um, takes T- yeah fucking some of the rappers aren't very nice people others are what Whoa! Whoa! Is is what we said. That's it. Find out which one. I'm, I'm gonna say bye. <laughs> I'm gonna also say bye in seven minutes when I finish. Um, <laughs> I'm Paul Light. I'm seven minutes away. <laughs> and remember, the one good thing about love happy is that sometimes you never really lose it. <laughs>